I'll note that one of the things I do not like about the Karzuk statue is all of the overhangs on the base. If you set it on the table, the overhanging uh, portions of the miniature will keep other figures from moving adjacent. Not that you'd want to move adjacent with a wizard, but small detail. The uh, huge boxes each have one figure in them, and you'll know when you get this one because this is by far the heaviest huge figure in the uh, group of huges. I was lucky enough to get two of the treachery demons. Very happy about that. Storm Giant is probably the least impressive of them. I'll call out some specific figures. The uh, ogres have excellent detail on them. Compared to the ogres from the Heroes and Monsters set, the um, Heroes and Monsters one is based on the artwork from the bestiary. bestiary. <laughs> kind of cartoony, frankly. But the ogres uh, for Rise of the Rune Lords is based more on Wayne Reynolds' artwork, and they look much, much better. I got a number of ogres. I was happy about that, too. Oops. Very nice detail on these. Much more likely to put these on the table than the blue one from, the best, uh, from uh, Heroes and Monsters. Someone on the boards had mentioned that the artwork for the Red Dragon, including the miniature that's pictured in the box, had a brighter red. And this is clearly a duller red color. But uh, I won't complain. Looks like a Red Dragon to me. The Wendigo is a lot taller than I was expecting. Compared to a typical player character, this is a very tall, large. I wouldn't have minded seeing the trolls from uh, Heroes and Monsters being this tall. The Forge Fiend is pretty cool. You can see through uh, the orange plastic. It's painted with metallic color. The Lamia Matriarch is also a very nice build. I would have liked to have gotten a better representation of Z Zanisha, which is the one of the main bosses in Rise of the Rune Lords, but uh, I'll be happy put, putting this one on the table instead. This was a figure, the, what's it called, the Lamia Kukrima? This is a figure that Steel Wind was very happy with when he did his uh, unboxing video for his review that he did on uh, YouTube. Not a bad one. I figured I would include this one just to disturb some people. This is a faceless stalker. Whoops. Come on. Nice detail on that. Excellent bugbear hero on this set too. I 
This is one of the NPCs. What's his name? Oric Van Kaskerskin. I figured I would uh, show you this one because of the detail on the shield. It's pretty much a copy of the artwork. It's very nice. I was happy to get a Siani figure, and frankly, who wouldn't? This is an interesting use of clear plastic, High Lady Athroxus. Her uh, orange plastic is used to represent the flaming quality of her weapons. One of the favorite NPCs of the group, Shalalu and Dosana. These things are hard to pronounce. Pretty much a copy of the Wayne Reynolds artwork you see on the cover of the Jade Regent Adventure Paths, and the new artwork you see in the Rise of the Rune Lords Anniversary hardcover. Unfortunately, a Mako Kajitsu didn't quite turn out the way I was hoping. The proportions of the paint job and the face and whatever just wasn't quite what I was expecting, but uh, still not a bad figure. I was happy to get Nualia, who figures prominently in the first adventure of Rise of the Rune Lords. Unfortunately, I did not get a complete set. I did not get Lucretia, and I did not get the, skin, the Skinsaw Man, but uh, that's okay. Not a strong complaint. I'm pretty happy with uh, the set. Another comparison I would like to share is the difference between the goblins. On the left is a goblin from Rise of the Rune Lords, and on the right is a goblin from Heroes and Monsters. It seems that a little bit more detail was put on, on the figures of Rise of the Rune Lords. Another point I would like to make is that the mounted goblins do not appear to be to scale. Maybe the head is about right, but um, but the goblin just seems a little small for it. But again, not a huge complaint. The last two figures I wanted to share are the uh, Cobalt Champion. Very small figure in comparison with Ziani. Uh, and finally, the Shining Child. Clear plastic was used to enhance this to make it, I guess, look, make it look more like a uh, ghostly type figure. It's a little shorter than uh, your typical NPC or typical medium figure. And that's what I have to share. If you want to see closer detail on the figures as I was spinning them around, just make judicious, judicious, judicious use of the pause button. And thank you very much. Have a good evening.